Ghana and his colleagues mm -hmm. in Birmingham, United Kingdom. Uh, currently, we operate in uh, around 13 countries around the globe. Um, we focus on two thematic areas. One is, uh, of course, life saving, providing disaster uh, and relief uh, assistance for disaster affected communities wherever they are. And the second and most important is uh, development assistance to lift out people out of poverty. Of course, in partnership, in partnership with uh, with our partners in government, uh, the civil society, and also the communities themselves. In Ethiopia, we started uh, working uh, some uh, 14, 15 years ago in uh, Somali region. Uh, responding to uh, the disaster, uh, natural disaster resource days, uh, mostly you know, drought. Uh, since then, we have expanded our scope both geographically and uh, programmatically. Currently, we operate in Afar, in Oromia, in Addis Ababa, uh, and uh, also in Somali region, uh, providing uh, relief assistance as well as development assistance to the communities affected and in need. So with this, uh, let me just uh, say once again welcome uh, and I would like to invite the Mr. Mohammed uh, Andosh, Director of uh, uh, Forestry, Environment and Climate Change Commission from Addis Ababa. Welcome, sir, to give us an opening speech. Good morning. I'm coming from the Commission of Environment and Climate Change with the Department of Climate Change Planning and Implementation Coordinating Directorate. So, uh, <coughs> Excellency, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure. Yeah, uh, it's my great pleasure, honor to be here with you. Welcome to Climate Change uh, Disaster Reduction uh, Workshop. Uh, as you know, Ethiopia is among the first LEDC or developing countries submitted the national development contribution on in 2015 uh, for UNFCCC. So this one particularly focusing on the adaptation and mitigation, especially for the greenhouse gas emission reduction. It is one of the most ambitious uh, <coughs> uh, plan for our NEDC uh, for the Paris Agreement by which many scholars believe it's aligned with the long term, uh, particularly for 1.5 degree uh, uh, goal of the Paris Agreement. It's important to mention here is that Ethiopia government has uh, created a good governance structure, uh, which is CRG Street Committee, and also the CRG Management Committee. And also there is the CRG Directory coming different ministry sectors, uh, particularly the major executive body of the country, implementing those CRG uh, strategy. Since here, the country has practical actions with regard to the implementing its climate related green economy particularly for the formulation of uh, policy, institutions, and strengthening these particular issues. Uh, as you know, climate change uh, is uh, variability and climate change such as increased intensity of severe weather events, particularly uh, droughts, flooding, rising temperature, and increasing rainfall is one of the challenges for climate change. As you know, it organized on Africa, the Africans, particularly vulnerable to climate change uh, in East Africa. Uh, the, phenom the phenomenon is expected to pose significant Ethiopian uh, social economic development negatively, particularly those are sectors vulnerable for the climate change, such as agriculture, transport, and energy and health. So based on that, we are implementing different uh, adaptation and mitigation uh, activities so as to mitigate those uh, climate change impact. To alleviate this problem, Ethiopia has been implementing different uh, adaptation uh, uh, plans, projects and programs. Particularly, we already uh, implemented and uh, uh, for the NAP, climate, national climate, national
National Plantation Plan. Those are uh, established in 2017. Particularly within the NAP, we have uh, 18 adaptation options uh, and five strategic uh, priority. So with that, we provide over uh, acting program for the country response to the impact of climate change, which complement other elements in issue related with climate change policy. Uh, specifically, uh, NAP Ethiopia elaborates a climate resilience component for climate resilience economy providing a plan for providing climate resilience across the sectors between 2030. The plan built on going efforts to address climate change uh, uh, issues in the country development policy framework, including the CRG strategy and the GDP, too, as well as the central and regional climate resilience strategy. Uh, since the launch of the NAP Ethiopia in September 2017, the, the Commission has undertaken a number of activities like regional capacity building, adaptation priority works, gender analysis for our NAP. Currently, uh, we already established the National Adaptation Roadmap, which was implementing around the regions and the cities. So, actively involvement and uh, support of the development of partners, particularly for the climate change issues, there is a lot of uh, partners. NGOs, civil societies for the implementation of the CRG, including uh, your uh, uh, partners. So in this regard, Israeli clinic has been working on various uh, activities, particularly for issues related with the elevation of mitigation of prevalent uh, climate change issues, and also providing micro credits and uh, vocational technical business uh, training for the <coughs> vulnerable areas. So the, the organization also providing small-scale agriculture pro projects involving irrigation, livestock, and PKP. All the efforts providing great role in the fulfillment of our CRG because uh, we are coordinating the climate readiness green economy in, 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 in national context with the coordination of other development partners, NGOs, uh, academic and other related stakeholders, so as to make make some resilience and mitigate those uh, uh, issues. So all the effort is providing great role in the fulfillment of strategy and map. Therefore, the commun communication and reporting system by the relief of our commission should be strengthened the capture of the efforts by the uh, organization. Finally, I would like to thank the country of Islamic uh, Relief Worldwide for the organizing this workshop. With, with this field remark, I would like to express my best wish for the rewarding workshop for this space. Thanks once again. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Muhammad Amrush. We appreciate you making the time despite your busy schedule. So at this stage, I'd like to recognize also the presence of uh, colleagues from the regional bureau from Somalia. I think we have people from Oromia as well as uh, Afar. So thank you for making the time. And uh, let me also recognize participants representing various NGOs, Mr. Omari from Hadith and others. Thank you for making the time. Um, the next uh, key uh, note speaker is uh, our own uh, Dr. Hani Albanna who, as I said earlier, is a founding uh, member of Islamic Relief Worldwide some 75 years ago. Currently, he serves as the president of uh, Humanitarian Forum. You're welcome, sir. Please welcome, Dr. Hani. Alhamdulillah, Assalamu alaikum Good morning, everyone. And uh, you were celebrating something yesterday. I don't know what was the celebration, but I celebrate with you. <laughs> Adwa. Huh? Uh, the victory of Adwa. Ethiopians' okay. uh, victory over Italians. Some we are all friends now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we eat the spaghetti and pasta. Exactly. And not only that, we teach them how to make pasta and spaghetti. <laughs> you and the Somali become better than Italian making pasta and spaghetti. <laughs> Coming back to talk about climate change, I look at it from the social point of view. The social point of view is climate change, the negative climate change is an individual responsibility. 
before it becomes a government responsibility. It's individual, all of us have to be responsible from home. The mother, the father, how to teach our children at home to be clean, to look after our uh, climate, to look after our uh, community. So this is the first step to do, is to go down, deep down to the individual themselves. The second is a big responsibility on the businesses. Quite often the businesses are behind the climate change, the negative climate change, because they dump waste in the rivers, they dump waste in the ocean, they dump waste in the sea, and they bury chemical and uh, nuclear and waste here and there. And they actually have dealing, bad dealing with people in any country. So we have to watch on those kind of businesses who are responsible to do that. Also, as our chief guest was talking about the schools, the schools and the universities, we have to make it like a part of the program of going to plant a tree, going to dig a canal, to dig a lake, and to preserve the birds and all these sort of things which are part of our culture here in Ethiopia with our culture in Ethiopia did not start today it starts as you believe people that Adam came here is it right? Prophet Adam came here first huh? so Adam was African from Ethiopia from Addis or from Afar or from where? so Adam was and all the languages came from Ethiopia all the culture came from Muslim. All the prophets came from Muslim. Is that right? <laughs> so, schools, school education, to be a part of the curriculum in the school and in the university, connected to a social program of volunteerism. This is actually the second responsibility. Our churches, our mosques, our temples have big responsibility. Because in their congregation, there are millions and millions and millions of people are listening to them and following them blindly. And we need to educate our Imam, our priests, our vicars, our rabbi, actually how to teach the congregation about climate change, the negative climate change, and how to restore the, our climate, inshallah. Then we'll go to the government, as you rightly said, to have uh, the government on our side, funding this kind of program, connecting, to try to empower the people about climate change as well. Then also, I've got a few organizations from civil society organizations. This is your responsibility. A civil society organization to lobby the government, to find solution, to put research on the table, to identify the problem, to engage with one another. Several such organizations has to be working together. Collectively, it doesn't matter where you come from, whether you are Muslim, you are Christian, or you are Jewish, you are any uh, Rastafari, uh, Rastafaria, and others, whether you are actually from the north or the south or the east or the west or the center, we have to collectively build forum to fight and protect our climate, our planet. And this is actually the role of the civil society organization. Then the state institution, which is actually behind the government, also has to be involved in finding a way to do that. Then the research and the university and the academia, as you rightly said earlier on, that you have to produce as an evidence-based research, evidence-based research to lobby from our country, other countries, and other bigger forum as well. Our farmers, we have to educate them about waste of water, what kind of fertilizer they can use, and pesticides they can use, and so on. And also a pastoralist. All this kind of process of education to everyone is a responsibility. From the individual, to the president, to the prime minister, to the chief of staff, everywhere. Then we go to the parliamentary and the political parties. They have to be responsible. Those people also have to be responsible as well to help us and to lobby what we need. What shall we do now? As I said, we, for, for our first said, it's a responsibility in all of us. We have to a civil society organization and the government to find the bad dealing which could be happening between the private sector and some of the people in, in, in the city and stop this kind of deal, especially for dumping the waste 
and deforestation which is happening badly in different parts of the world. You have seen the fires in Amazon last year in Angola and in Congo and you've seen the fire now in the, and not now, I mean a few weeks ago in, in, uh, in Australia and it claimed the life of 500 million birds and animals in a few weeks. And this is a, not only Australian disaster, it is global disaster. Actually, we have to find a way of preserving our habitat and stop the bad dealing between those corrupt private businesses and certain individuals in our country. We have to lobby on the national level, as you said, and on the international level. But our lobbying should be evidence-based research lobbying. The international governments and the international committee will not lever to emotional, will not uh, yani, uh, listen to emotional speech unless you have the figures and the facts and the impacts and the solution. This number and this one. Then we have to uh, raise awareness amongst every citizen, from the mother at home, like yourself, from the mother at home to anyone in the city, anyone, the awareness raising. Okay, and the government and the parliament has to produce legislation to protect our climate and to protect our habitat and protect our forests. They have to be enforced by law, like our uh, chief uh, guest was talking about. And uh, I mentioned about the foreign investors and uh, then actually academia. I'm not sure, did you invite academia today? Somebody. Academia has to be in the center of the finding a solution for the climate change. Because they are the people who have got the tools to identify the problem and to identify, find the solution. And the last but not least is to join any international forum, any international conferences about climate change so we can air our voice. And today we are going to uh, uh, raise the awareness about the COP26, is that right? which will be held where? In, uh, in Glasgow, uh, 9 to 19. Let me read something from the website, so for you to benefit, but actually we have as Ethiopian to attend on the government level, on civil society organization level, on uh, academia level, but we have to be uh, there with evidence-based research. Uh, since you know, it's every year it's happening since 1994. Uh, United Nations has gathered together the world government governments at uh, the its framework convention on climate change (UNFCCC) conference on of the uh, parties, which is COP, uh, held in different parts. Why hosting COP26 is a big deal. The, why, why hosting it, especially this year in Glasgow, is a big deal for all of us? Because world governments have met every year for nearly three decades to try to agree how to stop or at least reduce the impacts of climate change. But the fact that these nations have not been able to meet the overall UNFCCC objectives is one uh, of the reasons we now face global climate emergency. So we meet, we meet, we meet, but we fail to follow up. But we fail to implement. You know why? Because the multinational companies are controlling governments now. And this is the problem. The multinational companies are forcing a great government to leave the family of the climate change. And we know who was the government was left the climate change a few years ago. This is why we should meet, we should attend. From a policy perspective, COP26 will, will, will be important for at least four reasons. First reason, it will take place in a year when all countries are asked to submit their new long-term goals so ambition addresses all the government comes, yes, we'll do it. But we, 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 when, the, when it becomes reality, they might not do anything. But they will promise us this year, because they promised us before. To address the global climate emergency will be high on the agenda. This is number one objective. 
Also, COP26, it will have to finish the work of COP25. Because COP25 was before, uh, was, unable, because was unable to conclude, actually, setting out the rules for carbon market between countries. Still debate, especially for the industrial countries. From Glasgow onwards, the implementation of 2015 Paris uh, Agreement will be the key driver of international <coughs> climate action. We need to have international climate action to follow the Paris Declaration uh, in 2015. Uh, COP26 also will come just weeks before the election in America. And people in, in, in their objectives, they might think there might be a change of policy in America. We hope that whether a change or not, we need to make COP26 successful and invite everybody. To conclude uh, what I am going to talk about, climate change in an individual behavior. From the child, from the mother, from the father, from the church, from the mosque, from the synagogue, from the temple, from the politician, from the presidency, from the businessmen, from the university, from the schools, from the farmers, from the pastors, everyone. It's individual behavior and the individual belief that I love my country. That's why I want to protect my country. I love my history. I love my habitat that I have to work, protect my habitat and my history. I love my, uh, what do you call it, forestries. I love the animals, the beautiful animals in Africa. They are dying and disappearing because we kill them by our ignorance or our greed. Thank you very much. Wazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.